Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Fuel for Success. This is episode 229 on a uh, Tuesday morning. And um, good to see everybody here this morning. Tuesday, just like every Tuesday, we're going to be talking about life coaching and motivation. Uh, because life sometimes gets hectic and crazy, we do have a scheduling conflict, and so we're going to do a 20-minute show today, uh, which is cool because I want to do an experiment with that format anyway. But I want to thank everybody for being here. It's good to see all of our, our faithful live viewers and those that are listening on the archive later or watching on YouTube. And all of you that are subscribing, thank you for doing that. We appreciate you subscribing. Uh, we are going to send out some special videos just for our YouTube subscribers that will only show up there. So if you're not subscribed on YouTube, go check us out. Feel for, feel for success TV. Click on the subscribe button. Make it happen. Good morning, Matt. How are you today? Man, I am well. So you're saying people are starting to finally take our advice and subscribe to YouTube and iTunes for our talk show? That's awesome to hear, man. It is. It's very cool. Uh, that way we, we can put uh, top-notch immediate information into your hands as quickly as possible. So that's why we uh, we ask you to subscribe. And uh, I must have said something to tick him off. Oh, he's back. Okay. <laughs> Hey, you know what, Mike? I tell you what, this is episode 229. Like you said in our intro, we always talk about life coaching and motivation. Today's show, Tuesday's show, is all about the overall life, how to help people cope with life, you know, uh, get more done, save more time, get more organized, you name it. So we got a few questions right. that have come in, three or four questions we're going to get to. Just uh, want to open up with the... A little gift here, my friends, a little freebie. I was sitting at Whole Foods, and I was sitting there um, waiting in line for my wheatgrass, and I was, you know, somebody had passed by, and, and somebody else had asked how they were doing, and they're like, well, you know, could be better, right? So I was thinking to myself, you know, well, how could it be better? You know, how, how you know, in a practical way, how could someone make their life better, Right? So I like pulled out my iPad and I just, I'm a list maker. So I thought, okay, if it was in my hands to help every human being live a better life, what would I tell them to do? So number one would be obviously, you know, something we've talked about before, but I want to kind of go, you know, uh, 30 seconds deeper into it. And that's surround yourself with the best people possible. Like if you want a better life, I don't know of a faster way to get there than surrounding yourself with the best people that you can. Now, obviously, family, uh, friends, churches, networks, you know, business networks, you know, um, you know, conferences, and of course, groups, you know. And, and here's what I was thinking, Mike. So what do you do? Let's say you don't have positive parents. Let's say you don't have the most positive uh, you know, family network. Hey, let's say you don't even have the most positive church. Let, like, I really truly believe, because I've been there, there are some churches out there that are unbelievable that I'm like, dude, the people that attend this church should kiss the ground. Like, before they walk in, they should bow and kiss the ground and feel so grateful that they get to belong to such an unbelievable church. On the flip side, <laughs> I've seen, I've been in churches where I've seen like unbelievable people where I feel like the church should kiss their feet and be like, man, you should be grateful those people go here. You know, and of course, you know, I mean that in, in context, you know, I believe all of us right. should feel privileged anytime we go into God's house. But having said that, let's say you're in a situation where you go to a church that doesn't have the best people. It really doesn't. Uh, but then that's where you've got to find your way to stuff like Mission 25, because I'll tell you right now, you go to a Mission 25, you will meet some of the most amazing people that live on planet Earth, and that's not even a joke. That's not even a joke. Some of the most amazing people on this planet, Mike, and we're blessed. We're blessed every month to get to be around heroes, like people that... Right, that's true are just awesome, high quality people, high character, givers, servant minded, care about people. That would be number one. And I took too, too long on that. So I'll go quickly through the rest. 
Uh, read good books every day. If you want a better life, you got to start reading. Number three would be wake up early in the morning. Like too many people, Mike, are over. Uh, they're 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 not capturing the beauty of getting control of your day early. And I know it's hard, quote unquote. It's harder to wake up early. But here's the deal. Here's how you can become a morning person. Do it for five days straight and make yourself stay up. Because what that'll do is that'll actually force you to go to bed earlier. Because a lot of times people that are not morning people are night owls. So obviously you're not going to be a morning person if you're up really late at night. But if you'll get up early at like 4 or 5 a.m. and make yourself stay awake, I promise you by 10 o'clock at night, you're going to be ready for bed. So that's just a little freebie there. And then, you know, how can you ever talk about having a better life without talking about putting God first and following biblical principles? Mike, I am convinced a person can, can have the worst addiction, could have the most negative attitude, could uh, be at rock bottom, and if they would just simply take biblical principles and start living them, they would they they could become millionaires. They could become extremely successful. You know, you could have had your last eight relationships fail, but I promise you, if you will stop being stubborn and start following biblical principles, that you will start seeing success. That goes without saying. And then number five would be get organized immediately. Make it a priority to get your life organized. Too many people live messy, disorganized lives. They can't find anything. You know, their lives are just completely out of, out of, out of order, out of structure. And then, uh, you know, Mike, number six would be give away as much as you can. In other words, always give more than what you receive. Think about that scripture that says, um, it is more blessed to give than receive. Right. So on your job, give more. In your marriage, give more. With your friendships, give more. You know, in your church, give more. Like if you're receiving more than you're giving, then you've got to step it up. Because the real secret to happiness is giving. The real secret to blessing and joy and freedom is giving. So always give more than what you receive, and I guarantee your life will become better. Uh, number seven, uh, Bree, I'll go through the next three fast because then we're going to get into our questions. You know, laugh, play, and have fun. Too many people don't play. Too many people don't laugh. Too many people don't have fun. You start laughing more, having more fun, enjoying life more, life will be better for you. And then number eight is do what you love, you know, at all costs. Just start doing things you love. Start doing things you enjoy. And of course, when it comes to career and job, I, I read something I thought was amazing at Whole Foods. Mike, it said, apply for your passion. Instead of apply for a job, it said, apply for your passion. I was like, wow, I love that. That's good. And then number nine, do the daily five. The daily five I tell everyone to do is pray every day, exercise every day, meditate every day, read every day, and juice every day. Friends, if you do those five things every day, your life's going to get better. And then last but not least, something Mike and I talk about all the time, is be extremely grateful and think positive. If you stay grateful and you think positive, friends, I promise you, anybody on this planet, take this list of 10 things that I just gave you, and you live them, your life's going to get better. All of your life's going to get better. Your health, your spiritual life, your financial life, your family life, your friendship life, your church life. Every part of your life is going to get better. Wow, that's a that's a great list. Ten ways to make your life better. Uh, we could stop the show right there after ten minutes, and this would be uh, a value packed show for everybody. Uh, you know, here's here's a question, and I want to remind everybody that's watching live, uh, you can go ahead and ask questions and interact, and if you're uh, listening later or watching later on the archive, by all means, text in uh, any questions, 727-341-5599, um, uh, or you can email mike at mathematics.com, we'll get your questions on. I do have a question in here, aside from these 10 things. Okay. If you could go back, if you could go back in time and travel back to when you were 21, which really wasn't that long ago. For some of us it was. Okay. If you could go back to when you were 21, what three things would you do different? Oh, I'll, I'll tell them fast, and I want you to hear yours. 
Number one, Mike, the number one thing I would do different if I could be 21 again is I would save 10% of everything I earned religiously no matter what. I don't care if I earn $5 or $5,000, I would put 10% away. That's the number one thing I would do different. Number two is I would not have gotten married at the age of 21. Uh, getting married young, um, you know, everybody has their own view on it. I won't share mine, and I don't mean that negatively. I just think that you're different when you're 20 than when you're even 25. Such a big difference. So I would not have gotten married so young. That's me uh, if I had to do over again. And then number three I would have learned the value of personal growth and things such as time management and being organized. And I really would have gone into business a whole lot sooner than what I did. That's mine. What about you, Mike? Uh, other than marriage, mine aren't uh, very dissimilar. Although, you know, one of the number one thing that I, if I could go back and like talk to myself when I was 21, I would say, learn finances, yes. learn about money. Yes. I was an idiot with money when I was 21, and uh, I could be in a completely different place today financially if I'd known then what I know now. Uh, the second thing, of course, I was uh, I was an atheist heathen at 21, so I would have probably tried to witness to myself if I could go back and meet myself uh, because I lost a lot of years that, that could have been used in the kingdom of God. Uh, so I, that that's one thing that I would change was I would find God sooner. Uh, and then probably, I don't know, probably the last thing for me would be to get into business faster, uh, you know, and not spend as much time working for someone else as I did. Yeah. Those would be my three. Mike, those are good. I, I love what you said about learning money. Like now that we know this, I, I'm trying to tell my son, not trying, I am. Like he's going through all Dave Ramsey. He's reading books on how to become a millionaire. And I'm teaching him everything that I know. And that's our job. Like, really, as parents, <laughs> that's our job to, like, save our kids from, you know, every generation supposed to get wiser and better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, obviously, Mike, if you and I could be 21 knowing what we know now, but somebody knew <laughs> what we know now and didn't share it with us. You know what I mean? So that's Ooh. why we do stuff like Fuel for Success. And hopefully you take to heart. Like when older people give you advice, don't like, oh, he's no fuddy-duddy or oh, whatever. No, like really understand they're coming from experience. They're not coming from a book out of a library. They're like, they're telling you something they lived and they know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so and I like what Pacey said too. It's it's hard to understand like who you are when you're 21. And, and as you get older, it's like you begin to understand the things that you can uh, even accomplish and there's a confidence that you gain with experience that is difficult to have when you're when you're 21 uh, So that's that's definitely some good stuff. Hey, uh, so we did like a flashback. Let's let's flash forward Let's say 60 years and you're on your deathbed and uh, What uh, what is the one thing that like you absolutely don't want to regret on your deathbed. If there's anything that you can avoid, you don't ever want to get there and say, man, I wished I would have. What is that? You know, Mike, for me, and I thought about this when I saw the question come in, and it's a good question. I like going back sometimes to learn, and I like going forward to prevent. Um, for me, Mike, if I get on my deathbed and I haven't written at least 100 plus books about almost everything to leave behind for my kids and grandkids, I'm going to be extremely regretful. Um, and I mean that. I mean that. Like, you know, I, I'm not one of these ones that believes I'm not going to regret because I know I spend time with loved ones. I don't feel like I'll regret it. If I died today or if Caleb died, God forbid, as tragic as either one would be, there would be no regrets as far as time spent, you know. Um, any of my family members, same way. I'm good at expressing love. I'm good at, you know, all that. I've done what I love. I've followed my passion. You know, like the only regret that I would have is if I don't have a hundred plus book, because books live forever. Like my great, 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 great grandkids could read. And what's tragic to me is most people lived and didn't write books because everyone has a story. I don't care if five yeah. people read your book. If, if nobody else but your family reads it, you owe it as a person that lived 60, 70, 80 years with all this experience. 
You know, so that would be for me, Mike. That would be my number one regret. I would ache. I would lay in that hospital with anger. So now knowing that, I'm beating it. That's good. I uh, when, when I when I saw that question, the, the first thing I thought, and, and actually we talked about this a little bit this last weekend, Matt, is that um, I I don't want to regret missing an opportunity to work hard. Um, and one of the things that that motivates me and that drives me is that uh, if and I don't know if this is an ego thing or what, but at the end of the day, if I can be known as the guy that worked harder than ever, anyone else, that's that's what I want to be, and that's what I sort of want my legacy to be. And so uh, I don't want to I don't want to lay there and say, oh man, I you know I had an opportunity and I just decided not to do it, or I could have worked a little harder, you know. And and I don't mean work in business, okay? I mean work in life, working in relationships, working in ministry, working you know to connect with people. Uh, and, and that's the kind of work that I'm talking about, you know, putting in effort. That's, that's really what I want to get to. Yeah. Uh, the other, the other thing is that, is that I want to, uh, the one thing that I really, really, really don't want to regret is, is, uh, I want to finish strong. And by that, I mean that, uh, you know, I don't want to build a legacy for 25 years and, and, uh, and please, you know, feel what I'm saying here. I'm not, I'm not being egotistical or whatever, but, you know, we build our lives and we build our dreams and we build all those things. And I don't want to spend 25 or 50 years even building that and then come apart at the seams later. And, yeah. uh, so I want to finish strong with, with no, you know, I don't know, whatever, uh, well, I mean, look at negative Joe impact. I mean, you, the list could go on, the, the amount of greats that right at the end of their life, it unraveled, you know. So that's that's good. That's extremely good, Mike. I like that finish strong. It's a very piercing thought. You're right. You don't want to spend your whole life building a good name, a legacy, your kids, your grandkids, and then all of a sudden, like, find out, like, right at the very end, man, this guy was a fraud. <laughs> yeah. Well, and remember this too, today in the age of social media, in the age of, of data and, and information, uh, remember that we're all actually building legacy even now. I mean, as, as trivial as it seems to tweet or put something on Facebook, I mean, that information is probably going to be available to your great grandkids. They're right. going to be able to go back and look, look through your Facebook news feed. You know, a hundred years from now, my great grandkids are going to be watching Fuel for Success episode 229 and hearing what I didn't want to regret on my deathbed. And so, so Let that legacy in the digital media. Why don't you say hi to your great grandkids, right? Great grandkids. <laughs> great great grandkids, maybe. Uh, so, so that's the, that's what I mean by like building a legacy, and we're and we're all producing content, and we're all producing things. But I will say this, Matt, what you said about writing books convicted me. I got to get better at that. Mike, you can mix so. me. I mean, I, I'm I'm embarrassed. I'm literally when I say I'm embarrassed, I'm right in the face embarrassed at how little books I've produced, and it's just been a lack of focus and priority. But it's not that way anymore. But I yeah. should have already probably had 25 books in print by now. I'm pretty mad at myself. I am. I ache over that almost every day. I fight with my inner me over it. You know, when you know your potential's way up here and you're down here, that's what irritates people that are driven. Is when people look at you and think, "Oh, well, you're like successful." I don't feel successful. I mean, I do, I feel happy, I feel grateful, and I feel blessed. I don't feel successful. I really don't. I'm with you. I like what Tommy says. He's starting looking for opportunities, and he says, "I wonder how many I didn't take advantage of and missed." Uh, you know, that's that's always true. And and I'm a hundred percent with with Pacey here. It's like, yes, learn from it, but then you got to go forward and say, you know what? I'm going to look for the opportunities from here. And uh, that's because there, there's a there's a there's a balance between living with no regrets, looking forward, and you know, at the same time, learning from mistakes that you've made and opportunities you've missed and those sort of things. So. Uh, Go for it, Tommy. You got the goods, man. Absolutely. And you know what, Mike? I don't think we're going to get to our last question, which is fine. We're here every single day. Uh, Mike, right. I just want to encourage people. These kind of questions are thought-provoking. But ask them to yourself. Don't don't always have the radio and TV going. You've got to have some think time. You've got to have time where you go deep inside and you reflect and you evaluate. and you, it's, it's called soul-searching. Like when I sit down and I think of, you know, what's the number one regret that I that I would have on my debt that I don't want to have on my deathbed. That's that's at least a 30, 45, maybe an hour and a half 
like deep thought, like sitting there thinking about it. You, you know, that those these deep thoughted questions, Mike, actually make us better people. You know, they really do. Like, you sure. know, if you have a two year old kid, you should be thinking about their 18 year old birthday. Like you should be thinking like, OK, little Johnny's going to be 18 and 16 years. Like it changed my life as a dad when I did that four years ago and I fast forwarded, went deep in my mind and I sat in a chair. I like saw his whole birthday party. I lived it. I lived it. I, I totally lived it in my mind. And I literally sat there and thought, I'm sitting here at the end of the night. Caleb's out with his friends. Everybody's gone home. I've got a candle burning. I'm listening to some light, I don't know, jazz music. And I'm thinking, okay, my son's 18. What do I regret? Mike, it rocked my world, man. It turned my world upside down because I had a list. I had a list of probably 20 regrets. So I'm living every day now to beat the list. I like that. Hey, uh, we do have a schedule uh, conflict here, so we got to run. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Go ahead. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 9.30 for our show about, actually, tomorrow we're going to be doing a Mission 25 recap. You won't want to miss it. 9.30 in the morning, Eastern Standard. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, like Mike said in the beginning, hit us up on YouTube and iTunes. Always go to fuelforsuccess.tv. We love you guys. Appreciate your time and appreciate you uh, tuning in to watch with us. If this show is a blessing and you like it and it helps you, then you owe it to people to share it. Text the link, put it on your Facebook, put it on your Twitter. Tell everybody that you know about it. God bless y'all. Mike, good hanging with you. Look forward to talking to you later today, my friend. Y'all have an awesome day. God bless. God bless you.